Hey, how's it going? We're at the Treb Quarters with several of our whippers and we're pumpkin chunkin' season and people have been asking for dimensions or drawings on some of these frames. Um, this one specifically. I actually got an order for one of these too so I'm fixing to uh, build a couple. Uh, I've got some modifications going on for this one for a proof of concept for a much larger machine that'll be overall 50 feet high uh, and the top folds over for transport and still have clearance DOT clearance restriction uh, for on a trailer uh, and clear the bridges and whatnot so we have this tiny one here, the little desktop. It's it's 16 inches tall. Uh, pretty pretty tiny little machine, little desktop machine, and it'll throw marbles over 200 feet with you know about a pound of counterweight. Uh, then we have Baby Whipper, which uh, this will throw pumpkins. Actually, the little ornamental pumpkins. Uh, we have, and that one is, I think she's like almost five feet tall. Uh, yeah, just, just under five feet tall, 56 inches or so, 56 and a quarter. Then, uh, the 10 foot, the 10 footer, uh, that's twisted whipper, the 15 footer. This is Texas Twister, 10 foot, uh, Baby Whipper. Uh, this one has gone by several names, Brother. It's gone by um, Papa Mechanics Build. It's gone by Seven Foot Whipper. I don't have them all the videos in one playlist. That's something I need to do. And then I have a this structure over here was our 22 foot Whipper. There's the arm right there uh, in the weeds. It's it's big. It was it was 22 feet tall, and we had 2,000 pounds of counterweight, including the hanger. You can see the hanger's almost as big as uh, the 15 foot, or at least its axle, the frame height. Um, that hanger alone weighs over 600 pounds. So that was a pretty crazy machine, and I need to build a new frame for it uh, so this one here uh, the seven footer let's go ahead and get the dimensions on this frame uh, so the cross members front and back you have two by fours and two by sixes same thing front and back right okay and they're all the same width and they're going to be, well, 36 inches. This wood is several years old and is shrunk. We're at like 35 and 7 eighths. But it was probably 36 originally. Um, then you have the lateral beams on the side. And then the center beams. And they're all the same length. And they're 40 and 3 quarters. Then you have the, uh, the upper cross member or uh, towers of cross members. And it's 22 and a half. To this point and this is a 22.5 degree cut uh, because the this is a 45 degree angle in here and it's canted at 15 degrees so like this cut up here that's a 15 degree cut um, and since it's at these two different angles 
uh, it that that will be 15 degrees by uh, 22.5 going across just like these cuts uh, where I have it where this frame folds over the bottom cuts are also of this board are the 15 by 22 uh, compound miter and then the tower the towers themselves are 24 and a quarter the headstocks are nine by three and a half by three and a half with this channel cut for the, the tower the legs uh, to slide into and lock everything in um, okay for the length on these legs they're it's really hard for me to get it uh, an accurate length on them um, let me see how I can pull this I guess I'm about 46 about 46 and a quarter inches from this long point down long point down here right to the long point up here on the inside um, I typically cut a little flat spot like about a quarter inch about a quarter inch off the end of these so that it dies gives me something flat here and flat up here for these two pieces to lean up against when you slide them in there and they get locked in with these screws um, what else what are we missing Um, I, you can see all my you can see my videos with how the winch is set up and and how those things trigger. They're all basically the same, except that one, big the big one has two two winch set up. Um. Okay. Okay, the frame itself just the frame height uh, that's a good angle to get this from is gonna be 41 inches but with the wheels and their brackets the axle or the frame height is 48 48 and a half um, Plus the height to the center of the axle here, about another inch and a half. So 48 and a half, 49 and a half, about 50. So about 50 inches. Um, what, what else? The trigger. The trigger is a little like right at 36 inches and has these screw eyes in it for the trigger pin. Um, uh, it is the trigger is mounted at an angle so that when it folds up, it goes into the center of the space between the towers where it hooks into the trigger this is actually for the winch the trigger is on this side right here right down in there it's kind of turned sideways it needs to turn the other way uh, I broke that arm that's on video somewhere I'm sure I have um, 
It's rated for around 200 pounds of counterweight and can throw everything from golf balls to about two pound pumpkins. Uh, two pound pumpkins uh, between five and 600 feet and golf balls, well, you're around 500 yards, so way out there. Um, this, since I, I really pushed the limits on these machines, uh, you can see that axle is bent. <laughs> Uh, and it is a three quarter, uh, three quarter inch axle on, uh, these bearings. Same thing with, uh, the 10 footer, but that's a, a one inch, one inch axle on that one. I still bend it if the machine's not timed properly and, uh, the axle has to absorb everything and transfer it down into the frame it'll it'll bend that axle um what else the arm on this machine is maxed out at about uh 42 inches uh because it has to clear the frame right as it comes up it spins around and there's like 44 inches there um, so it's max, max arm length is about 42, 43 inches. The uh, frame, you can see this beam goes inside of the tower supports. Uh, I do that on all of the machines now. It gives it, um, clears the tower, the center tower support so it doesn't get taken out with counterweight this machine the 10 footer has them a little bit different it has these on the inside and i'm always worried i'm gonna bash through that and break the break that support off it hasn't happened but you know it's it's it it could happen uh this is a really old frame style i used to do with this it, it doesn't have the central the interior uh beams it, it has this central one going all the way across but it limits your drop distance uh, so I've modified it from that and and uh, gave it these beams and opened this space up so that the counterweight can fall much you know quite a bit further uh, see all of them have it taken out except this tiny little one which is a model of our first whip our first rolling whipper same basically the same machine as this one uh but without that cross member in it the 10 footer um when i'm gonna i'm gonna pull this i'm gonna set you down and pull this arm system off uh to show you stuff with it grab a weight and I'll show you how to uh, uh, get the proportions on these let's see how I can sit it there yeah all right so basically I have it you start with a piece of plywood and you find your weight I would actually increase this a little bit and there's reasons for that I would make it come all the way out to here um, so and just follow this curve around this is where your projectile is sitting so you want the space big enough to put whatever you're putting in there and give some some clearance for it to drop out that's a timing prop in there uh, that's just the timing on the machine uh, and when you know when you have this line drawn for your clearance and just uh, smooth uh, contour of that just so your pumpkin or whatever it is you're throwing doesn't hit anything coming out of there you have that clearance 
then to get this outer curve you want to maintain that that strength right here when this thing drops uh, being in this C shape it puts a lot of uh, tension on this plywood right here and I, this is typically when I break a, a hanger arm it's it's it breaks right there where it's trying to open up um, and that's how you get your curve uh, be it for this machine or, or any size so that's you know when people ask me how do you get that uh, proportion well it's uh, it's really it's a really difficult thing to relate to you to a person on and it doesn't really it's more of an algorithm thing to the conditions that you're putting it in uh, and the size of the projectiles uh, so that's how I come up with the curve on my hanger arms uh, two obviously two weight bars you can put a lot more weight right you can put twice as much weight uh, so that's why my competition machines have double weight bars so I can maximize what I can get on them this one's set up for 10 pound plates you can still put a lot of weight on it I've had over 50 pounds on this thing um, throwing baseballs it'll throw baseballs golf balls um, so that's some uh, dimensions on this machine. Um, you can go back through the video and write them all down and draw it up for yourself. Uh, this is what this machine is going to do. So the arm system will stay attached to it and I'll use a hydraulic system to, to open, to flip that top over like that so I get, I get my clearance. And the arm and everything will just stay attached and and the hydraulic system will just I'll put a cross tie I'll tie these two together solid for transport you need uh, across here I'll, I'll put a some type of a simple quick bolt-on X bracing so that locks all together and then your hydraulics kick in and they uh, they flip over like that Boop. And they'll come over and set down And then uh, hook it up to the truck and off you go, basically. Um, and when it flips over, this will be at about 24 feet. Um, which puts our arm, you know, like a 22, 23 foot arm. And about 48 feet in the air. You know, dropping like 10,000 pounds or something. Uh, should be crazy. Um, but that, that will be our championship class record, world record breaker, uh, build. Uh, this is just to get some of the geometry for the hydraulics and just show it off. Maybe, uh, get some, some funding or something for it. Anyways, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um... And I guess that, that's it. Take it easy.